The first report we'll look at for budgeting is the cash flow statement. And it's basically what we know uh, to do with a cash flow statement is to do inflows and outflows. So we'll look at uh, slightly differently the estimated future cash receipts, the estimated future cash payments, and the final bank balance we think we'll have in the future. And all we'll do is split those into three categories. So we'll start with operating, uh, the cash flows from day-to-day -day trading of goods and services, the investing, which is buying and selling non-current assets, and the financing activities, which relate to changes in the firm's financial structure. So we're basically going to keep doing a cash flow statement with one difference. It's just going to be predictions about the future. But otherwise, the sections and what goes in them will remain the same. So on operating activities, we'd expect to see inflows of cash sales, collections from debtors, any GST we collect, and any other revenue, e.g. interest or maybe commissions. In the outflows, we'd have payments to creditors for stock, buying stock with cash, uh, paying any expenses, and paying any GST. The investing section is quite simple. In the inflow section, we uh, have entries when we sell some of our non-current assets, and we have outflows when we buy more non-current assets. And in financing, we have the loans will be an inflow, and so will capital contributions from the owner. And the outflows will be paying back the loans, and the opposite of a capital contribution, which is drawings of cash by the owner. So looking at how we would prepare a budgeted cash flow statement, it is exactly the same as a cash flow statement. We'll start with our operating activities and we can just see the one difference is the word budgeted at the start of the report's title. But otherwise we'll total those up and write net cash flow from operating activities. Then we'll do our investing section and total it up, our financing section and total it up. And then we'll figure out our net increase or decrease in cash for the period. Uh, put that with the bank balance at the beginning and this will be an estimate we think that we'll have $17,856 at the end of 2015. So the only difference being this is a guess and not something that's already happened. So basically we need to remember that cash is like a big pipe that uh, there's three pipes that come into your business's bank account and three pipes that go out. There's the inflows which are come from either operating, day-to-day -day trading, investing, or financing and then money leaves through either the operating pipe, the investing or the financing. And what we want to remember is that different pipes mean different things. So if we've got a net cash inflow from operating activities, that's very good because it means we've generated net cash from our day-to-day -day operations and then we can use that to buy any non-current assets to help uh, the business in the future, make any loan repayments and maybe for the owner take some drawings. Here we have a net cash outflow from this section, that's really bad because it means we can't generate money from what we do, which is trading goods and services, so we're going to need to have to get it from somewhere else. And the only other two pipes are selling non-current assets and borrowing money, neither of which are good, or actually capital contributions as well from the owner, and they're not sustainable sources of money. Investing activities in that cash inflow could be looked at as both a good and a bad thing. So on the one hand, it could be quite positive because maybe we've sold some really unproductive non-current assets, things we mightn't use anymore. So maybe uh, some old delivery vans that are just sitting there. Well, it makes no sense keeping them. We should just sell them. However, a net cash inflow from investing could be bad because it's not sustainable because it means that the assets we've sold won't be able to be used to make future cash and revenue. And eventually, if we keep doing that, we're going to run out of assets to sell. So if we add a net cash outflow in investing activities, you could argue that's actually good. As long as it's in proportion, um, I guess it's good because we're going to be able to use whatever it is that we bought to generate future revenues in cash. And that's how we can get bigger, by buying more assets to make uh, future cash. And net cash inflow from financing is bad. If money's coming in that pipe, it's only coming from either borrowing money or the owner contributing capital. And again, these are not sustainable. It means that uh, we've increased our debt if it's from borrowing. And any borrowings have interest on top, which will increase our expenses. And also, the owner is not an unlimited pool of money. The owner has to, you know, can't continually support the business. So a net cash inflow from financing is bad. Net cash outflow from financing, on the other hand, is actually good. And what it means is that that money has been spent on paying back loans or making drawings to the owner. Now again, if this is all in proportion and done uh, correctly, this is going to be good because it means we've got lower debt 
and lower interest and the owner is actually making money from the business which is why everyone goes into business. So ideally the correct way we should run our business is we should have net cash inflows from our operating say 100,000 and we should be using that money on net cash outflows from investing say $60,000 in non-current assets and net cash outflows in financing say loan repayments and drawings of 20,000 and that would leave $20,000 extra as kind of a buffer to sit in our bank account. So that's the ideal situation. Uh, looking at some negatives though, for example, if we did generate 100,000 from operating, that's very good on its own, but not when we compare it to say, maybe we spent 130 from investing, we went and bought a whole bunch of non-current assets. And for us to survive on a day-to-day -day basis, we're gonna need money to pay the bills. So there's only one other pipe this could be coming from, and that must be financing. So if we had to uh, say borrow $40,000, that's not a good situation at all. Well, what about this situation where we actually generate for $100,000 from operating, which again on its own is terrific. Uh, investing activities, we're spending $130,000, which is very bad. And then financing, we're spending uh, $40,000 as well. The thing we need to remember with that is that uh, although we have an extra $10,000 in our bank, it's gone up for the period, that's going to have interest on it. And if it's from the owner in the form of capital contributions, that means the owner is not going to uh, be making money from the business, they're going to be supporting it. Uh, look at this situation, we make $100,000 from operating, but we are paying back our loans and taking out money for ourselves to the value of $150,000. So uh, drawings are good, uh, loan repayments are good, as long as they're in proportion. And in this case, this business is not making enough money to sort of pay back its finances at the moment from its operating activities. So the only other pipe it can make money from is from the investing section. So they might have had to have sold non-current assets to the value of $60,000 and that's not good because it means we can't use those assets ever again to generate future revenue. Uh, lastly, what about if we actually have a net cash outflow from operating? We can't make money from our day-to-day -day trading. Well, that's the worst possible situation. And what that means is for us to survive and pay our bills every month, we're going to have to be getting money from selling our non-current assets or borrowing money or getting it from the owner, both of which are terrible. Looking at budgeting, the whole point is not so we can uh, be, have any certainty as to what's going to happen, but if we do think uh, future events are going to go one way or the other, we can start to make some future plans and decisions. So, for example, in the cash flow statement or the budgeted cash flow statement on the left, we think we'll have a surplus of cash. So if we did a budget, we think we're going to end up with a final bank balance of $35,000. We can start to make some plans. So for example, we might choose to maybe buy some more non-current assets, maybe buy a lot of stock in, uh, stock in bulk to get some discounts, maybe repay some of our debts a bit early, like our loans and our creditors, make some drawings for ourselves, which is a good thing as long as it's all in proportion. But on the right hand side, what if we expect a situation where we're actually going to be $35,000 in overdraft? Well now we need to sort of start to think about some different decisions. Maybe we should contribute capital. Maybe we want to look at getting a loan from the bank or extending the loan we do have. Maybe if we plan to buy some non-current assets, we defer that and leave it till later on. Maybe same with creditors, we call up some of our creditors and ask for an extension. Uh, maybe we might actually need to extend our overdraft. So this is where budgeting is different. We can actually start to make some decisions now about the future as opposed to just looking at old events and trying to get some meaning from them.